It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And it is a beautiful day in very, very early spring. And we are at the Escondido Garden to do the first maintenance of its life. This baby garden is a year old and there's so much detail work to complete. It looks, I mean, it, it's first glance, you would think, well, why are you here? You know, everything looks perfect and it's great but there are details, so many details. For example, like um, pulling all of the dead flowers off of the barrel cactus, um, detritus removal, the neighbor's trees have dropped. The client has done a beautiful job of weeding, so there's not very many weeds, but each and every one of these plants also needs to be evaluated for um, alomite, God forbid, snout weevil for any kind of infestation. There are a lot of lizards in this garden and there's some decollet snails, which I'm gonna show you in the back that work, um, they're, they're beneficial insects and beneficial animals that keep the balance here really great. So we aren't going to go chemical in this garden. We're gonna to continue to work with organic uh, methods. That we found on this Plagatillus, so unfortunate. Other side. Look at there. See that? That's alomite. Ooh, yeah. And in here, here. Ah. I'm wondering. All over the blooms. It's right here, too. You can see on the bloom. Oh, yeah, on the bloom. We're going to have Omar um, really evaluate this plant very carefully and see if there are any branches that we can remove that are not infected. Um, if not, we'll have to dispose of this plant. There is also an aloe noblis right here. There's a big canker. Look at this. And see, aloe mite is a microscopic insect that can move from one aloe to another. So it's really, really important to get these under control. Also to wash your... Yes, to wash your, wash your tools and equipment um, after working with this, with, this, with this mite so you don't inadvertently spread it as well. Uh, the, you know, you can see that we need to deadhead, um, all of her aloes have bloomed out, uh, the Aluaudia procera, I'm going to throw a couple of Homer buckets of water on this plant to get it going. It, it needs to leaf out. So it's warm enough now that it, I feel like that would be a good time to put some water on that plant so we can inspire some leafing. Then here, our client loves this lush, thick look. I do too. So we aren't going to manipulate this uh, tapestry garden too much. Like this is knitting beautifully. Yeah, I've, see, some people don't like this though. They like to see space between the plants. I love this mosaic look. We'll deadhead all of the plants. The, this mangave that's bloomed out, we'll deadhead it. Um, well, we will apply some pet friendly snail bait because you can see where the snails have gone after this uh, snow leopard. And this is one of the uh, cherry chocolate chips. And I, this was the first garden I used this plant in and I didn't know what it would do. And it got way bigger than I anticipated. So we're gonna pull this out. There look to be a tremendous amount of pups on this plant so we might replant a couple smaller pups we'll go ahead and take care of the bloom i think yeah i think that'll be it in here for the most part uh, shall we look at the courtyard yeah. oh and this this anomaly this is hilarious this well, cactus i had to come and yeah. cut and reset because i've done this once before yeah hannah had to cut and reset this once before because it was listing and i think what we have here is a plant in the wrong spot. It's too hot. It doesn't get the right kind of light and it's confusing it. It's reaching for light. Um, so this is coming out of here. We're gonna put it somewhere else in the yard and put something else in this pot. Uh-oh, our Aeonium sunbursts. You can see it's getting ready to bloom out. Um, one over here as well. Yeah, yep, here's one here getting ready to bloom out, so we'll take care of that today. Then in the courtyard, 
this has been such a, a treat. This was the first thing we did for this client before we, we got into the yard. These folks were brand new to cactus and succulents and weren't sure. So we did the courtyard first and then moved on from there. So this Pilosoceros azurus um, is just absolute perfection. It's a little bit yellow. Uh, the new growth, you can see the blue new growth and then it turns a little bit green. So I will apply a little fertilizer to this plant today. And any cactus or succulent appropriate fertilizer is great to use. Worm castings are also wonderful for coloring up cactus, I've noticed. Um, meadow uh, macrocarpus. This is a petalanthus. This looks great. This uh, Hercules wasn't sure about it here, um, but it seems to have rallied. And for the most part, I think it looks really, really good. We'll clean up the, the dead leaves on the bottom. We'll tighten up uh, the plant material and rock work in here. Uh, the Hesperallo pot is fine. The um, Echeveria look good. These the kiwis, look, kiwis awesome. look amazing. This poor Millie didn't like it here so this millie eye is going to come out that's, all that needs to happen. that's really all that needs to happen yeah and i might find something else to put in here because of the way we staged the trigona so far back mm -hmm. i feel like we kind of need something here mm -hmm. but look at the string of pearls have you ever seen such happy string check this yes one. i've seen happier right there look at that really guys check this out look at this look at that wow isn't that just insane kind of makes me want to dig it out and push it back right yeah I think that's what I'm going to do there and then this is weird guys check this out this mangave something with teeth and jaws tore into that plant I've never ever seen anything like this so that will be coming out and we will be putting something else in this pot Thank God whatever ate that didn't decide to have dessert because that's the only plant it bothered. And the Bacarnia looks amazing. Super happy here. All righty. This side looks good. Yeah, this, uh, this side over here, remember the client had these Plumeria and we incorporated them into the design. Plumeria are succulents, technically. They do store moisture in their, in their, um, in their stems. So I love working with Plumeria in my cactus and succulent designs. Also, the Minima is doing what we love, laying flat and behaving itself. Did we have a, oh yeah, huh. Oh, look, this sunk. See, you guys, remember we decided let's just be really environmentally conscious and put, you know, empty bags, soil bags, plastic bags, and plastic pots, crunch them down really far into the pot before we add the soil because some of these pots are really big. But this is what happens. Um, I don't like this. I don't like that this sunk so much. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to do soil. What about rocks? Well, up to a point, same thing. There's going to be gaps, right? Where, where the soil can, can um, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, the soil's going to find its way and it's just better just to use and compact the dirt in there. Okay, whoa! Sunburst Sayonium's doing their thing. The Petalanthus bracteatus. This is a magnificent stand. Client loves this. So we aren't going to do much, but remember I'm here once a year. So, um, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll push it back a little bit, but we're not going to go crazy with that. This cotyledon, it's not horrible, but, um, I don't know. I feel like moving forward now that we've, this garden has been here for a year, um, that's kind of a filler plant and we can do better. So we might look to put something more special in that spot as time passes. This mangave, snow leopard, you can see, you know, all of the pups that she's thrown off. So it's perfectly fine to just cut off the bloom. This is not gonna die per se, 
I'll show you what it looks like when we cut off the bloom spike. Beautiful. See? It doesn't look bad at all, right? It's just going to keep doing that. So this doesn't do much. The mangave blooms are kind of nothing like burgers. Yeah, it's kind of like an agave bloom. So over here, we've got this, you know, marvelous trio of pots. This is a Mission to Mars that I brought from my house. It's looking spectacular in that pot. Um, this is stunning. This is a pot that Terry did, I think, last time. You know, maybe clean up the aloe, just those spent leaves, easy peasy. And look at the athona. Oh, the athona capensis is giving me life. Look at that. Bam. Super cool. Really, really happy pot. Mm -hmm. This is normal. See how the under leaves are yellow, but the new growth is nice and green. This just tells you that these leaves are old and they're, they're getting ready to fall off. So don't hesitate to pick those off if you want to. You're not going to hurt the plant one bit. All right. The Palo Verde Desert Museums. The, it's interesting the one in the front is blooming already, starting to leaf out. These are a little slower. Um, but again, airy, beautiful, lacy trees. The Bacarnias here are also happy. Yeah, the Bacarnias, super happy. Um, the aloe hercules is really, really happy and growing at a, at a very nice rate. Here's another one of those cherry chocolate chips. So this was a good spot, mm -hmm. but when we planted it, it was only about this big. But this, I think, is going to be just dynamite right here. I don't think we need to do anything else. Is that a no, no um, that's not. I don't know what it is, but no. And there's a cool euphorbia like that. Doesn't look like it's, I, I'm a little leery of planting euphorbias uh, because they tend to get so big. Um, but that, that has maintained its size. And interesting that we have a barrel cactus back there. I don't remember planting that back there. We may, well, let me look at, you have one, one, two, three, the triangle. Oh, I guess, and yeah. Yeah, and maybe this Aeonium, this looks like the silk, it might have really expanded. And so now it just looks a little weird. But I think I will move that barrel from back there because it's just really lost. And see, this Aeonium sunburst got so heavy that the stems broke. So this is going to get dug out, cut, and reset. And they throw off these air roots. Yeah. So they try. I mean, those roots go down into the ground to try to support the weight of the branch, but it was just too much for it. I really appreciate the effort. I wonder if this, I don't think this fair ox bloomed this year. I don't see any evidence of it. Very interesting. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, the guys took out all of the Aeonia or the um, or the aloe cameronii and cut them and reset. That's something that I like to do on a once a year maintenance because what's going to happen now is these are going to all turn bright red. Super cool. Oh, and there's a little bird's nest in in the Draco. It looks like it might be a hummingbird's nest. There's nothing in it though. They're, it's empty. So the birds must have already fledged. In this uh, Rostrata, something went down. I don't know what, but it's like, oh man, I am not happy. That um, is great though, yeah, but the, look at, see, here's why we aren't gonna panic, because this new growth looks, looks really good. It's strong. It's, yeah, it's very strong and green. I am gonna fertilize this though, because I just wanna give it a little boost. All right, and look at this fair ox. Woo wee, doing its thing, looking good. Hasn't, flowers haven't even opened yet, but it's spectacular. Our client loves this plant. And see how this cotyledon just looks so leggy and gross. This whole area right here needs completely reinvented. I'm gonna rip all that out. I hate that, that's not cute. Um, oh my gosh, here's our false saguaro that we moved from the patio uh, planter that they demoed and it's thriving 
in the ground, thrown off a couple of what will be branches. So spectacular spot for this plant because there's nothing stopping it from growing as tall as it wants. And this, uh, this agave shark, shark fin, I think Tom calls this, uh, spectacular. It looks great in here. And they just redid this patio, put down all these pavers. Um, and in doing so, this area now looks a little empty. So we were talking with our client about adding some more cactus specimens in here and some more larger boulder. Nothing too tall that'll block the view of the fountain, but some really interesting plants. She loves cactus that flower beautifully. So she feels like this is just kind of a nothing burger. Uh, but when we had the patio cover, it's just interesting how things change when, when things go away. Um, I think all that's needed in here to really make this pop is a little bit of height. I mean, to get something in here, not that'll block the view, but something a little taller so this isn't so flat. Then she bought some more pots. So we're going to be reworking, um, fluffing up a lot of the pots and filling the new ones with beautiful specimens that I got from Al at Botanic Wonders. I got her some really, really cool things. So it's interesting how well these bromeliads have done in full sun, huh? Yeah, I'm not sure how, I don't know if these were in the shade before the patio cover was taken down. Um, these might not survive the summer here in this location, but no big deal. I'll just put something else in there. All right, let's take a look at those decalots. Well, they're all over the plants too. See, look at these, these little guys here, these cute little snails. You know how there's no damage to the plant whatsoever. They're, they're, they're all over it. They're all over the macrocarpa. These are called decolate snails and they eat baby um, helix snails and their eggs. And the helix are the snails that do the damage. So we really want to encourage the decolates. And she's very lucky that she, they like it here. So they're doing their job. This, this is just, uh, now the macro carpus, the idea here was for this to grow taller, to give us, you know, some structure against the fence. And it's starting to, this isn't the fastest plant in the world, uh, but it is beginning to grow and a little fertilizer on this today might encourage additional growth as well. This fountain, when they re redid the patio, got moved. So this area here needs some work. We're going to uh, add some black river rock around here. She said that this rock was falling through the grate. So yeah, there is some little, we've got some little rock, oh yeah. So we're gonna take all of this off and, um, and redo the rock on here. This Kalanchoe is done. Look at that, see, this has bloomed out. So this needs to go. And you know, the, the what's in left in there looks good enough yeah, that we might need cut to, cut let's yeah, like let's cut them low and see. Oh, there's one that hasn't bloomed out. So, yeah, not bad, right? There you go. Fixed it. Yeah, we should probably roll up our sleeves and get to work. I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Okay, so we're done for the day. And wow, um, just want Hannah to go through and show you how beautiful everything looks, all polished, cleaned, weeded, detritus removal done. Hey, give Rita a shout out. And hey, Rita, Hannah met you at Home Depot today and sh said that you have it going on. Congratulations on your beautiful garden and thank you for watching my videos. Um, 
so yeah, we treated the plants with a systemic. We did note some alomite. We had a couple casualties. We showed them those. Yeah, so you know, we did use some some chemical on this garden today. We put down some more pre pre-emergent uh, to combat the weeds. Uh, but for the most part, you know, it was just getting in and and looking at each plant. We cut back portolacaria. Cool yeah, this euphorbia. I got at Al's Botanic Wonders. And Felipe told me that each one of these segments represents 10 years of growth. And it's so fascinating because years where the plant got more water, it's the segments are longer than, than years where it where it was in drought. So it's just, it's a conversation piece. It's a 40 year old um, euphorbia and it just looks spectacular in this pot surrounded by its happy little aeonium friends. Uh, let's see, what had did we do over here? Um, there was that barrel that was over there. Ah, uh, yes, that cute little barrel right here. It was buried in the back. So it got planted right here at the, at the foot of this bed looks amazing. This aeonium, we talked about how we were going to cut and reset and we did. The a, these, all these Cameronii got taken out, cut. Um, we brought up the soil level, reset them as cutting. So these are going to turn nice and bright red. Hannah cleaned up the poor little um, Restrata and we gave it a systemic treatment too because that systemic also contains a fertilizer. So that should help that uh, do real, real well. And then, yeah, over here, I planted this adorable creature got, that I got from Owl's Botanic Wonders too, this little bonsai, so precious. We put a Kelly Griffin star aloe in this Talavera pot. This is one of the client's new pots. And then over here, Terry did her magic. And we have a client that loves color and fire glass, and you know how I feel about it. So most of the pots got top dressed with fire glass. They look so stinking good. A lot of snails in here, so I did apply some bait. Um, they're also, we also applied, or will apply bait on the outside of the pony wall too, because we think a lot of the snails are coming up from the canyon. So Ramesissima, every coll good collector needs a Ramesissima. And since this client is doing such a great job, I'm going to start bringing her in more expensive collectible plants. And she's very excited about that. Oh, this looks amazing. Well, let's start here. So stinking pretty. This Trigona rubra is beautiful in this Talavera pot. Hannah picked up, a, this is a Euphorbia mock. It's not a plant I'll use in the ground because it gets massive, but I think in this pot, those colors, it's stinking gorgeous. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And this astrophytum is so mature and so stunning. Then we had Daddy Greg. Um, they had a lot of little rock that had um, fallen down into the grade of this fountain. So Daddy got the, went home and got the shop back, cleaned it all out refilled it and then the guys put some of the bigger Mexican beach pebble around it and we were able to start this up again and this corner now looks so stinking gorgeous. We were did not really have to do anything much in here at all. Um, before I leave today I am going to put some additional water on the macro carpa because I think they just need a little boost so they'll bloom. We've got another really cute euphorbia back here in this Talavera pot. Um, we did move this bromeliad. She did have this pot over here, so we swapped them. We put the milii here and the bromeliad here because this is a much shadier area. Okay. I'm going to be coming back on Sunday and beefing up this area with some more collectible cactus and more boulders, and then also bringing in rubble and the kidneys are gonna get beefed out too, because I feel like they're just, we didn't have quite enough rubble um, when we did the install. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna build that up a little bit, make it look a little more muscly. These pots, spectacular. They all got uh, touched on, more soil, elevated, whatever, their need, whatever needs they had were met. 
Did we show them what Omar did? Mm -hmm. uh, wait till you see what Omar did. Look at that. Right? Isn't that stunning? He did a, that is just perfection. It looks so good. And he went through here, trimmed up all the portalacaria away from the rock. This all got the treatment. Um, everything got the treatment. I did, we talked about how I was going to move the cherry chocolate chip. There was this giant cherry chocolate chip here and the snow leopard was there. So I'll show you where I moved the cherry chocolate chip, but I moved the snow leopard in here, put a little sedum over there, found a family and all of their neighbors of snails uh, in, this, in this area. So we treated with bait here. And this is where I put the cherry chocolate chip. I put it in this pot where we had the cactus that was, yeah, kind of not happy. Um, the client adores that, and so do I. I think that looks so good. And then in here, I just fluffed everything up, moved the funky cactus over to the corner. I love it in that pot. I hope it does well in here. Everything got a little systemic and fertilizer in here and got watered. Also, this little Plicatillus, this was what was left off the one that had alomite. These are the two pieces that weren't affected. And this is the pot, of course, that had the eaten mangabe in it. So we're going to see how that does in there. Those are cuttings. We'll see how it goes. Also, one more thing that I'm going to do when I come over on Saturday. She would like to have this yucca rostrata elevated. When I put this in, it was a cutting. I mean, there were no roots. So it has figured it out and it has rooted. So I don't think, actually, you know, I don't think I'm going to have to take it out and upset it. I think I'm just going to add more rock. Um, that'll be fine. Uh, she calls this the watermelon pot because we have black cinders and then, then the red buttons in here. So she thinks it looks like watermelon and she's not wrong. So yeah, I'll pick out all of the red, elevate with black and then put the red back on. And our, uh, our cute little totem cactus. Brown. Yeah, this is all new up here. It's so cute. All right. Okay, so that's about it. It's been a very full and big day. Remember to go to lauraeubanks.com and get on the waiting list for the next succulent tapestry live with Laura, which will be happening in April. Get your name on the list. I will be able to get into detail with you then that I just can't take the time to do in these little tips of the day. So love you guys. Catch you on the flip. Bye-bye.